Hi there, I'm Jeff Bishop. I'm the co-founder of RagingBull.com. I'm one of the top real money options traders in the entire world. I want to share with you today. Good morning, everybody. We are here for Early Morning Crypto Talk, Bitcoin, Brandon from Los Angeles, California. Thank you for being here. It is Wednesday. The week is halfway over. One more week till Christmas time. Go ahead and type in the chat box where you're listening in from. See who we have on. Let's see. We've got Sean the Voice, Robinson, Moshe Frazier, Barbara Brown, Vallejo, Renee Hoffman from Maui, Elijah Morgan, Hercules, California, Tony Pinkston, Philadelphia, Nicholas from Sweden, Marty from Victoria, Texas, Destiny from Seattle, Lashana from Richmond. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube channel. Melinda McAdams from Ohio. James Jones from Dallas. Where are my Dallas peeps at? I'm looking forward to coming back there. Dallas or Houston. As a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed financial advisor to be giving financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share suggestions, and it is up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. The four rules I live by in the crypto space to have success. Rule number one, education is key. Education is everything. Rule number two, never invest money you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three, where do you see, oh, I'm sorry, always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. 
And rule number four, where do you see yourself in three months, six months, a year from now? What are you willing to do to make it happen? Stay focused. Do not get distracted. And keep it moving forward. Now, this is not going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most that we can ask for. So let's see, what do we have in the news today? The, the crypto market, let me hit the screen share first and foremost. So you can see my screen. All right. Let me hit refresh. You rely on snag to every. All right. Crypto market caps at 114 billion. Oh, wait, wait. Let it refresh. That was yesterday, 114 billion. And today I am actually I'm, I'm experimenting here because, as you know, I said in 2019 is going to be the year of cell phone wars in the crypto space. And I'm experimenting. I have a crypto SIM card uh, that allows me to have unlimited talk, text, web, and data for free for the next six years or so. And I'm testing it out, comparing it against my main phone. And I've noticed when I do my, when I do my Zoom calls or, or these crypto talks, I, I always use my Bluetooth because I like to walk around when I get excited and stuff. Uh, and I've noticed that by calling in, it, it drops sometimes like it did yesterday. So I want to see if that has to do with my phone service or is it Zoom itself that's dropping my call. So I am actually using uh, my crypto phone to see if there's any difference. And I've been testing this thing out. And so far, just to give you preliminary results, it moves faster, it downloads faster, it connects faster than my main phone. Like, you know, whenever you get a, a direct message or somebody's texting you, you get that ding on your phone, uh, it, it, it hits my crypto phone first before it hits my computer and my other phone. So it's, it's, it's just moving faster. I did a speed test, I got it recorded. So we are working diligently. I wanna bring one way, I will say this, one way or another in 2019, you will see me selling something that has to do with crypto, uh, crypto phones and, and blockchain with the uh, uh, telecommunications world. That is, that is my world. That's where I made my money from. That's where I come from. And it being in the crypto space excites me. One way or another is going to happen. Uh, we're looking to somehow bring that into KGX. Uh, so. I'm testing this out in, in January, you'll start hearing me speak a whole lot more about it, whether it's in KGX or not. Uh, just give you a heads up, because this is something that everybody needs, everybody need, you can use to save money, and it's the next evolution. And, and I really believe it's going to take crypto to a whole nother level, because now you're introducing people to crypto who normally wouldn't necessarily care but they care about their phones. So they're not going to go anywhere, you know, with that. So what's going on? Eldridge from Vegas, Brad Gibson, Patty Moore, Shane West. I forgot to mention the voices from Philadelphia. <laughs> Patty Moore than Hawaii. Bouget Bouget. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Cynthia from Phoenix. All right. Look at this. The market jumped eleven billion dollars since yesterday. Twelve bill uh, 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 in twenty-four hours. Bitcoin dominance is at fifty-three point five percent. That meant it dropped from fifty-four percent, which meant that money went to the altcoin. Bitcoin, it, right? Well, whoa, whoa! I need to cancel my my buy order. See, this is this is the only. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. But let's, let's read this chart. I'm going to tell you guys the pros and cons of 
doing the strategy that I'm doing. Diana Townsend's on live too. That's rare. Uh, Bitcoin, 8.8% up. Ripple, 11% up. Ethereum, 10% up. EOS, 1%. Bitcoin Cash is up 34%. It jumped all the way to $133. What about Bitcoin SV? It's up 14%. It's up $93. The market this morning is strong. It is very strong. And I see I'm going to have to make a move. Let's look at more details. Last price, 37.78. Real time is seven up 7%. So if coin market cap saying it's 8%, it's dropped a little bit. It's dropped down 1%. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is the real time. Look at the five minutes in the last six hours. Uh, it's below the middle bar. Bottom bar is dropping a little bit. So it's having a little bit of correction. People are selling. People are making their money. Uh, as you know, I have been lately day trading, but using a different strategy than when I first got started. Uh, when I first started tra day trading, I was looking at these charts all doggone day, and that drove me crazy. I'm using a different strategy now of placing buy and sell orders, following the box that I see on here, and walking away. The good news is I make money. The bad news is I miss huge opportunities to make more money. Now, here's one thing you need to understand that I learned in trading. Don't sweat the trades that you miss. The whole point is to make a profit. doesn't matter what that profit is. When you start to think in a greedy sense, you end up losing. Like, you might see, wow, if I sell here, I'm going to make a profit. But look how high it's going. It's going to keep going higher. When you actually could have sold here and make a profit, but you're trying to ride it up, you go to the bathroom and come back. The sucker dropped all the way down to here. Take your profit. So I was doing some, some math. Yesterday or the day before yesterday, I made three points, almost 3.8% uh, 3 on my money. Yesterday, I made 2.4%, 6% on my money. So plus, let's see that. So the last... So this week I've made 3.79. This week I've made 6.25% on my money so far. So far. Now, is that significant? Well, if I was trading with $10,000, I would have made 625 bucks in two days this week so far. So think about that. If I, if I continue this trend of between around my, my goal is just average 2% a day. That's my goal. The average 2% a day. That's $200 a day if you're trading with $10,000. 200 times 30 days, that's $6,000 a month from the strategy that I'm using. Because right now I am averaging more than 2% a day. If I was using my original strategy and actually watching the chart, I would have probably done 7 8% yesterday because this all took place last night. Asia woke up, Europe woke up, and uh, they started, this thing ran up because my, if I look at my last, you see here, I did a buy-in at 37.39. That was at 3.15 p.m. yesterday. At thirty-seven thirty-nine, I had an automatic sell set at thirty-seven sixty-six. That's where that two percent uh, or uh, one point seven percent came from. However, if I didn't put that sell in and I was actually watching the chart, it also it got all the way up to thirty-nine eighteen. Let's say I sold at thirty-eight fifty instead of thirty-seven sixty-six. Do you realize? how much that was, you know, that would have been like a seven, eight percent gain instead of a 1.7 percent, but I ain't sweating it. Again, my strategy is to learn how to be able to set my trade and walk away and, and have enough, you know, slush fund in there, $10,000 to sit in there and make an extra of between five to 10,000 a month just by setting one or two trades a day. 
Now you're taking matters into your own hands. That's a full-time income for most Americans, between four to $6,000 a month. And you've got your money working for you. What if I put it in to $20,000 that I'm trading with? My only concern with that is when you start having it that high, you can end up manipulating the market and things not going the way you want because people are doing what I'm doing and looking at who's got buy orders and sell orders. And like I'm, I'm following this bot here. And I'm also another skeptical skepticism rose in me. At first, I thought it was an individual that's got 50 Bitcoin in, buy and sell. And then I realized that it's a bot. But now I wonder if. This is something that's being controlled by Poloniex themselves. Because I don't put it past these exchanges to figure out how to manipulate the market themselves. I don't see this bot ever winning, buying or losing. What do you mean by that? Well, you can see all the trades that take place, all the sales, all the buys. You have market trades, you have your own. I never see this number dropping. See, let me give you another example. You see here how it has three sell orders for me? It's actually only one. It just sold it in pieces. It didn't sell it all in one sell. Only pieces of it sold until the whole order was fulfilled. So I've got four sell orders there. Same on the my buy when I place this buy order. It shows two buy orders. I only place one. It's only because it only sold, it's bidded in pieces. Now, here's what I like, though. Back on the 5th, I was at $341. Today, I am up to 400 Well, let me see. I am up $427. dollars on doing this new strategy that I got going on. So that's, a, that's, a, that's good, you know, making some money there. It's only, I don't care about this amount of money. What I care about is the percentages. But anyways, my point, and I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. And if not, you know, I'll need to do another uh, detail. Well, we, we got something going on tonight with myself and Jarris Coleman. So we'll talk about this more in more detail. Uh, but I've just noticed that that bot is constantly adjusting. It's constantly adjusting its buy order and it's constantly adjusting its sell order. It's like it's like it's a point of reference that everybody else is is banking on, and it's always within a forty dollar swing between the buy order and the sell order. And come on, exchange, moving so slow for me. Well, that's doing that. Let's look at the best performers for the last 24 hours. Stratus is up 62%. Bitcoin Cash, 34%. Mona Coin, 50%. See, I remember yesterday I also talked about not just trading on Bitcoin, switching it between Bitcoin and the other coins. See, here's a chance we could have made a, a, a killing that I jumped on. Bitcoin Cash went up 34%. Bitcoin only went up 8%. Or any of these others. Only thing is, Polonius has Bitcoin Cash trading on hold right now, frozen. Let's see the worst performers. Were there any? Lenki, Gemini Dollar, that's a stable coin, 10X, Factum, Moac. Only ones that's in the negative. Okay, my exchange should be up. All right. So if you notice here, see this? This buy order for 50 Bitcoin, 187,000 at 37.53. And then I see a sell order for 50 Bitcoin at 38.10. Always within $40. And whenever the price moves here, this automatically adjusts itself. So a human can't do it that quickly. It's, an, it's a bot that's doing it, but it's not actually hitting the, its marks. It's constantly adjusting. I don't know what to make of that yet. I don't know. Uh, that's some form of manipulation taking place. So I'm going to have to adjust my strategy just a bit. 
and follow another well like this one here. 25 Bitcoin, that's almost $100,000, has a buy order in for 3713. What is my buy order at? 3766. They have it low. So let me see, do they even have a sell order for the same amount? Any other wells on the on the sell side? There's a 50. No. So this is an individual that's doing this. Here's one for 10 Bitcoin buy orders. Unless they're, uh oh, wait, wait, 52. I might have to change. No, that's a different. We got a different well on the scene here. A buy order for 52 Bitcoin. This is one of those, <laughs> if this is new on the scene, fear of missing out. And see how it went to 51, 51. See, this is what I'm talking about. I never see that happening on this one. It's, it's buying pieces of Bitcoin right now because it hit that mark, 3789. So this is a whale that's realizing the market is jumping up. They went in on the game and they just bought a gang of Bitcoin. Know how to read the charts. This is going to make you a whole lot of money. Let's see what, what did Diana, uh, Bethany say. Yesterday, Michael and I did some trading, bought at 32.50, sold at 36.70. <laughs> Made over 12%. That's what I'm talking about, Bethany. That's some money right there. 12%. That's some money. If you were doing... If you were trading with ten thousand dollars, you just made over twelve hundred bucks in one day. See, this learning this skill set means it doesn't matter what the market's doing. It doesn't matter what happens to you on your job. It doesn't matter if your KGX team is growing or not. If somebody's doing anything or not, you can make money. It's like you've got your own ATM machine, especially if you've got a significant amount of money in there to play with. You've got your own ATM machine. I don't have enough money to buy a, a mining rig. Really? Start trading with 500 and work your way up. That's the whole point. KGX training. All right. I got to get I gotta get going. I got to be visiting my grandma today. So let me get to, into some, uh, some information here. Now, this one caught, well, before we go there, let me do this one. Bitcoin surges 18% in three days as it nears $3,800. What's next for the market? Do I, do I want to adjust this? Because I'm not going to be looking at this for the, till this evening again. My buy order's at 37. What are theirs at? Let me see some of the whales. Buy order. He's at 37.91. Do I want to buy it that high? Or do I want to risk it coming back down? The trend is showing me that it's leveling it off a bit. I don't know. I'll keep it there. Before I leave, I'll see if there may be an adjustment. The high of the buy is at 37.91, all the way down to 3,700. What about the big boys? This got it at 37.13, 37.38, 3762. Thirty-seven sixty-two. Where are we at now? Thirty-seven ninety-one. Huh. That's too low. Thirty-seven sixty-six. Hmm. I'll keep it there. This is pointing down. That's pointing down. All right. Let me put this in. Bethany, you're gonna have to do a video on that. This is how you want to build your KGX business. You talk about your results. You learn from the training, you put it into action, and look, you made 12% in one day. Since December 17th, within less than three days, the Bitcoin price has surged from $3,181 to $3,776 against the U.S. dollar by more than 18%. On cryptocurrency to fiat exchanges like Coinbase and Bitstamp, Bitcoin has slightly corrected to $3,700. But the breakout of the dominant cryptocurrency above the $3,700 mark has led analysts to consider the possibility of the asset testing major resistance levels in the $3,800 to $4,200 range. What does that mean, resistance levels? Again, when you look at the chart, 
is this chart here, resistance levels. So we've got 40, would that hit that wall? Well, major wall right here. 4,200 is where that first big wall is there on that side, on the sell side. Hold on a second, I got my gardener outside my window. It's Wednesday, this is what happens. Oh, come on now. <laughs> All right, anyways. Um, so we've got the buy wall at 3,800, uh, well, 3,700, really 3,600, 4,200. That's what it means whenever you see anybody talk about the resistance levels, 3,700. 40 or 3,800 to 4,200 range. Yeah, where's the rest of the article? There we go. On Monday, when the price of Bitcoin was hovering around 3,500, a cryptocurrency trader with the online aliasing, the crypto dog, said that BTC could either drop below the $3,400 mark if it loses momentum or potentially rise 3,800. BTC consolidation below resistance. If we rose, if we lose strength, I look at 3,400 for support. Below there, I am concerned. A breakout, I am eyeing 3,800. See, if I had known that, or if I was watching the freaking chart last night, I wouldn't have done my sell at 30 at uh, 3,766. I would have saved that sucker and let it go all the way up to 3,800 range because it went all the way to 3,918. But I still made a profit. That's the point. Still got my 2%. That was all I was shooting for. So it's not a loss. It's all good. Does uh, Bitcoin, since Bitcoin has shown strong signs of breaking out of the 3,800 resistance level, which it has not been able to do since December, this thing may go all the way up to 4,200. So uh, as the market started to show extremely oversold conditions, many major crypto assets started to initiate a corrective rally, eventually pushing the entire market to surge in valuation. Traders that shorted Bitcoin from the top at around 19,500 have also started to cash out their position, estimating the midterm bottom of BTC to be in the 3,000, 4,000 range. Huh. You know what? <laughs> this is what I hate about this day trader stuff. It's now 3797. Going back to the $3,800 mark. This makes me want to, I want to get in and on it now and buy. I just, I just know the moment I do so, the doggone thing's going to drop. 3766. Let me look at this again. 3851, 3802, 3775. What's the chances of it coming back down to 37? 66. That's where the wall is for it. 3766 is right around here. I mean, it's not that. And chill out, Brandon. Stay with the program. All right. I'll leave it there. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Traders that showed Bitcoin from the top at around 19,500 have also started to cash out their positions. I'm done. I don't want to ride this thing to zero. I don't want to try to squeeze more out of the lemon. I don't want to think about it. It seemed like the right time. They just saw it was going up and wanted a piece of it. Yeah, those were the ignorant people that didn't understand it. They bought high and now they're going to sell low. Analysts have generally attributed the intensified decline in the value of Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and other major crypto assets to the lack of fundamentals. Ethereum has not been able to show a high level of user activity in decentralized applications, while Bitcoin Cash struggled to gain merchant adoption. The surge in the price of Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and other protocols like EOS show that traders are more comfortable in entering high-risk positions and confident in the short-term trend of the market. What does that mean? It means what I was talking about yesterday. If you do a sell on your Bitcoin 
instead of, and this is what I should have thought about, instead of going ahead and buying back into Bitcoin, why don't you buy into one of the other ones? Ripple, Ethereum, Strat uh, Stellar, EOS, where the percentage has a better risk of getting a higher gain on your money much faster on the short term. Always make sure though there's enough volume there that's going to cover your order. All right, you guys understand that? That's important. That way, like for example, let's say if, 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 if Bethany did that and Michael, and instead of 12%, what if they ended up getting 20%, but they got it on another coin, sold it, and then bought right back into Bitcoin. So you don't want to just look at Bitcoin, but also get comfortable looking at the other coins that might have more volatility taking place. When Bitcoin is swing trading and there's not much volatility, one of the other coins might be doing this. And you can like, be able to make a quick, quick sell that day. I'm just saying it's another strategy. I, I'm just not into it all day like that to be looking at it that way. All right. Well, the both major cryptocurrencies the small ERC-20 tokens can maintain their momentum throughout the weeks to come and sustain the price range achieved in the past few days remain uncertain. But the recent corrective rally allowed the crypto market to obtain some breathing room and avoid a large drop below the $100 billion valuation mark. I'm going to make a prediction about Bethany and Michael right now. I don't know their financial situation. I don't know how much money is needed to bring Michael home. Here's what I do know is that they have learned a valuable new skill set and that they now can chart out a path of how much money they need to trade with, money that they can afford to lose, okay, and chart out if we do 4 or 5% a day on our trades. Some days it might only be 1%, other days it might be 15 to 20%. Then we therefore can figure out how much money profit that's going to bring us on a weekly basis. And I would say get it to a point where it's double, your monthly double than what Michael is making on his job. And then you can walk away from your job. I don't know how long that would take. You know, that's that's a Bethany and Michael household decision. But I'm using them as an example because that's also anything, something all of you can do based on whatever resources you have at hand, whether it's $500, $5,000. If you're going to trade more than $10,000, I would, I would encourage you to do so on, on different accounts, uh, like have... 10,000 in buying and 10,000 worth of selling and, and only pull the profit out. Rinse and repeat. Because once you start getting above that, you manipulate the market. Now people are re re responding to you. And never pull that, that ten, whatever you're trading with, never pull that out. Only pull the profit out and keep that in there. Keep it going. So I'm proud of Bethany and Michael for, for that, learning the skill set. And the rest of you can do the same exact thing. They just, took action. All right, let's go to, only got one more article. I got to get out of here. This one I find very, very interesting because I've been talking about this for a year. Bitcoin futures manipulation, how it works and how to reduce it. First, I want to see if what they say is what, I, what I've been saying and see if I can learn anything new, any insight on this. The markets were euphoric. The community was cheer, cheerleading the imminent launch of Bitcoin futures first, the CBOE and the CME last year. That would be work. We thought more money was coming in. We thought, man, this thing, if it got to it got to eight thousand eighteen thousand dollars without the futures, imagine when when the when the rich people come on, it's gonna go to fifty thousand. That's what we were thinking. I did a Facebook Live last last December and I even said, you know, I'm not sure which way this is gonna go. Common sense would say it's going to go higher when you have institutional money coming in. Here's what I didn't know. The rich guys, when they came in, they were like, we're not missing out on this. They bet against it and pushed the price all the way down. And they basically hit the reset button on Bitcoin. That's what they did. 
Nobody saw that coming. Well, the retail investors, we didn't see that coming. They did. So anyway, they saw this as an indication that institutional investors were just around the corner and that Bitcoin was about to moon. Fast forward to today and the feeling is quite the opposite. Holders are left scratching their heads and licking their wounds. Keep holding. No way in the world if you bought Bitcoin at more than $10,000 that you should be selling it. Just because it's that big. And I still think like uh, what, what um, what's his name? Uh, da Vinci. Let me see. Where is he? That's my aunt. Where is he? I don't know. Anyways, what Da Vinci said, and he he said that um, this is going to be a dead a dead cat bounce. That yeah, it's going to rally a little bit, but then it might drop all the way down to two thousand dollars. So, anyways, so what happened? While there were a number of factors that drove Bitcoin into one of its worst bear markets to date. One cannot ignore the potential negative impact that these futures had on the market. In this article, I will take a look at how futures contracts could have been used to skew the markets and why contract delivery is such an important distinction for a futures contract. But first, let's start with a bit of futures history. How long is this article? I'm looking at the time. You know what? I do not have the time to go into this like I want to. I can read it, but I'm not going to be able to. So I'm going to save this article for tonight uh, when we do our our talk tonight because it's important you know how this is working. And so when you know that it's going on, you know that you, you're going to be able to work around it and use it to your advantage. So, yeah, we're going to save this article for tonight. And I'm constantly looking at this thing, 3790 the last price i needed to get here so that i can buy and the moment i buy i'm going to put my sell order at the 24 hour high was 3918 resistance is is uh real resistance wall is at 4200 so if i sell it at or if i buy it at 3766 why not? I'm going to put my thing at 39.50. Let's go for 10% plus. And then I'm going to walk away. And I'm going to do a bet on that one. <laughs> I'm going to walk away and I'll see what happens to, tonight. Anyways, that is it for today. I had another article. I was going to go over to BitTorrent creator aims to kill Bitcoin with the green cryptocurrency. Chia, what do you mean green? What are you doing here? What's the difference from our green coin? Solving the electricity wattage problem of Bitcoin. That is what we are going to be doing as well. So, yeah, I wanted to. It's a short one. I might save this one for later on as well. All right. I hope you guys learned something new. As always, that is the point. Everybody have a great day. God bless. See you later tonight. Bye-bye.